The sequins started as a uh, small incentive to change practice within hospitals or within trusts. And this was our first opportunity to really force change and atta attach money specifically to those changes. Initially, there was quite some resistance and um, it was a very bureaucratic process. But we've tried and I think been relatively successful in succeeding to move this towards a clinical focus of making change happen. We've wanted to aim our sequins at changing hearts and minds within the hospital and change cultures. We've wanted that so that patients could feel the difference at the end of a period. The scheme that I'm involved in is a regional sequin and it's the Advancing Quality Programme and it's all about um, delivering the right care to patients at the right time. There are five focus areas involved in this regional sequin and they're around stroke care, acute myocardial infarction, heart failure, hip and knee replacements and pneumonia. The programme is all around is decreasing the length of time patients spend in hospital, reduce readmissions, it's all about reducing complications and saving lives. So the overall aim of the sequin I've been involved in is aimed at patients who are awaiting a total knee replacement. The focus being to promote shared decision making so that the patients who are awaiting knee surgery are really involved in making the decision of whether to undergo the surgery. But crucially, that they have a good experience and that they have realistic expectations. So my target for this project was to provide resources and useful tools which could be used for this patient group, for patients who are awaiting to have a total knee replacement. The next tool was to develop a Patient Voices DVD, which in summary was six clips of six patients who had undergone surgery in the past, explaining their experience and how it had been for them. And I encourage these patients not just to tell us the glory of the nurse and the doctor, but very much to say what it was like when they'd gone home, how it had been to climb the stairs, when they'd felt comfortable driving again, and some of the real life problems that they faced following the surgery. With the aim of patients who are considering the surgery seeing what it is really like, and it's not just a case of I'll be up and running a marathon in a few weeks, that you know, it can be a bumpy ride, and there are things to really consider before undergoing surgery. I'm here to talk today about the end of life care sequin which is a three year locally agreed sequin and we've just entered the third year. In the year one of the sequin it was something that the commissioners very much felt that the acute trust needed to improve the quality of care we delivered to our patients and their families as, as death approaches and death is something that scares us all so it was a huge ask and a big challenge to us as health professionals because we do not like to accept that any of our patients are going to die. My personal health background has been in cancer nursing. So approaching and considering mortality has been something that I have done for many, many years as a professional. What we've learned out of cancer care is now evolving into all different clinical areas. So the end of life sequin is pr promoting what we've been doing in cancer for many years for staff and patients and families with all conditions. So the year one of the sequin very much focused on us looking at what services we currently delivered. One of the big problems that we had was bereavement care. So when a patient died in our hospital, it could take considerable length of time for the information to be made available to the, the families. So what we did as a trust was we introduced a bereavement centre here at the Royal Lancaster Infirmary and employed bereavement liaison nurses at the both Royal Lancaster Infirmary and Furness General Hospital. The bereavement office coordinates all the deaf documentation and supports the bereaved relatives and signposts these people on what is available for them in the community to support them after the death of a loved one. They also look at organ and tissue donation and indeed as a result of this sequin, Royal Lancaster Infirmary has been one of the biggest tissue donors in the country with a huge number of people donating corneas so that people can see after the death of somebody else. I'm really pleased that we have managed to achieve our, uh, our sequin targets. It means that the patients are at the centre 
of what we do. They're getting the right care and the right treatment. The team um, should be proud of all the hard work because we've got clinical engagement from the medical staff right through to the nursing staff and they should be very proud that we've delivered and met all five focus areas that we should be proud as Mark and Mayor. So moving on into the next 12 months, the sequin for 2014-15 is, is going to develop similar resources of patients' um, voices so that patients requiring hip replacement surgery and colorectal surgery will equally have the opportunity to hear the experience of others and have realistic expectations. This has very much been a team project. There's a lot of work being involved and the nurses and the doctors, the whole multidisciplinary team on all three sites at Kendall, Lancaster and Barrow have helped me to drive this project forward to encourage patients to partake in the project for the benefit of our future patients. The End of Life Care Sequin has brought together specialists from all different disciplines, specialist palliative care, district nurses, GPs, generalists who deliver palliative care with a common goal of improving the care and support of patients and their family as death approaches. So sequins have been something that have allowed us to get into the discussion with the acute hospitals about changing what we as representatives of the patients and who see them out in the community feel might be improved by doing it differently. If we could do this in other ways without necessarily attaching money to it, you could achieve the same things. However, it's often difficult to enforce that change without putting money behind it.